every circumstance, every situation. Lord, you know every struggle, oh God. Lord, you know every desire. Lord, you are the answer. Oh God, we pray for those that are sick today. We pray those are struggling in their finances. We pray for those that are struggling with their walk. We pray, God, that you would have your way. Lord, we pray that you would renew your church, oh God. Renew us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're not going to have a song tonight. So we're just going to get right into the Bible study. So you may be seated. I want to review uh, just a little bit about last Wednesday. Um, who is wise among you? Uh, we went over the text that James uh, was writing to the church in James chapter 3, 13 through 18. And he goes from talking about the tongue to wisdom. And he said, who among you are wise, who are endued or filled with knowledge? And he said that we need to show our works through meekness uh, meekness of the wisdom. And so we talked a little bit about that last week, and we understand that there's two types of spirits uh, and two types of wisdom. And the wisdom that comes from above is going to produce purity. It's going to produce righteousness. It's going to produce mercy and, and meekness and humility. And it's going to produce uh, fruits, good fruits. And it's going to produce peacemakers. It's going to produce being peaceable. And so the wisdom that comes from the earth uh, or comes from the flesh or the world, uh, it produces bitterness and envy and strife and evil. And so uh, we understand that he was trying to tell us that we need to follow after the, the wisdom that comes from above. And then Sunday I preached this in Boynton and because we're celebrating Independence Day for our nation, uh, I basically came from the point of view that we are free from the wisdom of the world. And so we don't have to serve the world. Uh, we need to serve God. Amen. And so tonight I want to follow up on that message from Wednesday. And I want to uh, talk to us about how we should pray. We should pray, God, renew your church. Uh, we could take it personal uh, individually and say, Lord, renew my church, the one that I'm part of, which is your church. And so we're going to read Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And here the writer is writing, and he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, when you think about that, it's our reasonable service. God paid our debt. God delivered us from sin. God delivered us from the lake of fire. God has done so much for us. It's our reasonable service is to be holy, to, to be a living sacrifice for the kingdom of God. And Lord, if I'm not living that, renew me. Renew me, O oh God, to benefit your church for your kingdom. And then he goes on and tells us in verse 2 that our part is to be... Con is to not be conformed to this world. But we need to be transformed. Transformed by what? By the renewing of our mind. We need to renew our mind. If we're going to renew the church, we got to renew our mind. It's our reasonable service for all that God has already done for us, for us to not conform to this world, but to be renewed in our mind. And, and so... And then he goes on and says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We ought to be interested in nothing but his will. I know that we're human. I know that we have issues. But really think about it. He done so much for us. It's our reasonable service that we ought to do the will of the Lord. Not our will, but his will. And then verse 3, he says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to every man and woman that is among you, not to think of yourself 
too highly. It wasn't me who saved me. It wasn't me who made the decision to fill me with the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, when I went to church, I had no plans of changing. It was God's mercy. It was God's grace. It was God leading me. It was God there to fill me with His Spirit. And so it wasn't nothing that I did. I just simply uh, decided to go, but I didn't know that God was going to change my life. But I thank God that He did. And so he said that, that we ought not to think of ourselves highly or more highly than we ought to, but to think soberly or meekly or humbly about ourselves according to what? According to God and how he hath dealt each one of us a measure of faith. God even gave us the little bit of measure of faith that we have. The faith that we had to receive, the message to receive forgiveness, was because he put a measure of faith so that we could receive. Can I get an amen? Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all, y'all understanding what I'm saying? That If it wasn't for the faith that he gave us, we wouldn't even be able to, to receive anything from God. And so don't think of ourselves too highly. It was all God. It's all about God. God made all the opportunities. He paid the price, and he gave us a measure of faith. And so I actually really was not planning on changing, but thank God that he did. I searched for him, but I didn't know what I was searching for, Brother Romig. Hallelujah. I longed for him, but I didn't know what I was longing for. I was searching for something. I had a void in my heart. I tried So many different things, as I'm sure you have, to fill that void in your life. But what it was is it was him that I needed. It's what we all need. That's what everybody needs. And so we see in verse 4, he says, For as we have many members, but we only have one body. we got to be unified. The opposite of unified is divided. And so we need to be unified. We we are many members of this one body, the body of Christ. And so we being many are one in Christ, and everyone and everyone members uh, one to another, having then gifts that differ or that are different, diverse according to the grace. Whatever we have, Brother Romeo, whatever gift we have, Brother Mike, whatever it is that God has allowed us to have, whatever gift it is, it comes from Him. It's not because we are special. It's because He gave it to us, and He made us special if you look at it that way. And so whether it be prophecy, let them who have the gift prophesy according to the proportion of of faith. So whatever God gave you, you need to use it. It's your reasonable service. Now, as we introduce this portion of scripture, tonight God renew your church, renew my church, which is your church. We need to understand that we struggle sometimes with renewing the church. Why do we struggle? Because we're human. Romans 12 spells out the nature of the struggle. Conforming to the world or transformation according to God's will. It is the struggle of the Corinthian church between carnal and spiritual. It's the struggle, be, listen, it's a struggle for all of the churches. Between the carnal, the flesh, and spiritual. It is the struggle of the church Laodicea between cold and lukewarm and hot. What we need is a hot on fire burning church so when people come to the altar, the fire will be there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we build an altar, and literally I hope we get to build an altar soon. As soon as the city after a year and a half will allow us to build an altar. Amen. Amen. But literally, when we build the altar, God will send the fire. And so we need to understand that we can't be cold or lukewarm. If we feel like we're cold or lukewarm, we need to change some things and get on fire and renew God's church. The burning question, hallelujah, today is what will we do with the church? Will we attack it? 
Remember, if you have the wisdom that comes from the earth or comes from the devil or comes from your flesh or the world, it doesn't line up with God's wisdom. God's wisdom is pure, holy, oneness. It's unified. It's one. It's not divided. It doesn't cause discord. And so we can either attack the church, we can criticize the church, we can neglect the church, or we can quit the church. Or, or we can help renew it. Say amen, somebody. I know everybody's got a busy life. I know we got so many things going on in our life. But the number one thing that we ought to really focus on is the renewing of God's church. We got to find some time to do something for the kingdom of God. Not even Jesus did that, although he saw the church was in deep trouble. How many of you know that there's three things that God told us that we're going to be really happy? Oh, hallelujah. Man, that's quiet. We will really be happy. Oh, boy, we're in trouble. If we don't even, if we're not even happy, we're in trouble. Because God assured us that we would be happy. Say amen. Well, maybe we got some work to do. We're supposed to have joy. We're supposed to be cheerful. Three things that we can understand that God said that you will absolutely have happiness, and you will be fearless. Wow. Anybody got any fear? That's not of God. God said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. So we should be happy, and we should not have fear. And the third thing, he said, you always have trouble. The trouble that he's referring to, however, is not the trouble that we're going to always have trouble in our life, but it's the trouble that the church and its effectiveness. Church is going to struggle with being effective. Church leaders list several different areas where the church is in trouble. Number one is discord, division. Every church experiences it because you have someone that doesn't have wisdom. They don't have knowledge. And so the wisdom that they have comes from them, comes from the earth, comes from the world. And so what does it do? It has bitterness. It causes discord. It lies. It divides. It's jealous. It's envy. And it doesn't bring unity. And so God said there's always going to be trouble and Leaders say one of the biggest problems that the church has is division. People who cause discord. And only Jesus Christ could bring unity between the Jews and the Gentiles in the early church. Today, the divisions in the church is between activists and pious. In other words, there's the social and then there's the personal. It's good to have a personal, deep relationship with Christ, but we also are called to go into all the world. We're called to do outreach. We're called to be social and try to reach the lost. Some people want to do that, but but they don't take care of the personal. Some people want to be personal, but they don't take care of the social. We need evangelism. We need a deeper life. Yes, we need to fast and pray, and we need to isolate. We need to spend time with God, but we also need to evangelize. Somebody say amen. And so this is important to have a personal relationship. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. And we need to have a personal relationship, but we also need to reach for the lost. Say amen. And so we need to go into all the world. Now, we can go into the world. We can support them financially. We can pray for them. We can send them, or we can actually go on some mission trips. And we need to reach our community. We need to be missionaries and evangelists to our own community, which is not something that we're doing as well as we ought to be. 
And what we need is we need these cases. We need balance. Everybody say we need balance. We need to have a deeper relationship with Christ, but we also need to be out reaching for souls. Amen. We need to be praying for missionaries. We need to be praying for evangelists. We need to be, we need to either go on a mission trip or support one or pray for one, and we need to do our own community outreach. The problem is here that we have inconsistency. Some of the church leaders said the second thing that they run into besides division is inconsistency. We get hot and we do it for a while, but we're not consistent. We have our ups and downs. We're cold. We're lukewarm. We get hot a little while, but then we get cold again. We get lukewarm again. We get hot. We get cold. We need to be more consistent. There is a gap between what we profess and what we produce. The Christian life is the way of life. The Christian life is the way of life. We don't, we shouldn't just come to church. We should come to church and pray. We should come to church and believe. We should come to church and give. We should come to church and, and worship the Lord. We should come to church and, and, and reach the lost. We should come to church and support missions. We, we, there's so many things that we should be doing. It should be the way of life. Not a cold for a while, lukewarm for a while, hot for a while, back to cold. It should be a consistent way of life yet the way we walk isn't always consistent with the way we talk i'm guilty all of us might be guilty a little bit christians apostolic pentecostal christians especially ought to be leading the way the problem is we're irrelevant sometimes Outside in the world, the world says the church is more concerned with programs and not people. And we don't have that problem here because we don't have a lot of programs. Maybe we ought to have a few more programs. <laughs> Hallelujah. But even the programs are ir irrelevant to the world in the world's eye. Hallelujah. That's all right. I can see. Glory to God. The problem is that we are not consistent and we're irrelevant. In other words, we're, we, we, we ought to be more relevant to the world. There ought to be something that they see that draws them, not just a program. They're not interested in just programs. Now, some people will come to programs, but that's not going to change their life. And so if the church is possessing salvation and hope and we're, 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 we're proclaim, pro proclaiming that, does, does, not, does not our witness, shouldn't our life and our work kind of match up with what we profess? Shouldn't our, our life of salvation line up and be a light that shines into the darkness and draws them? It should be a relevant thing for the world. The other problem they say that we have is inability we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world we we have the power to preserve society and the 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 dark moral standards that the world is living in but we fail to use the power that we have we 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 don't take we have the ability but we are unable to apply it another thing they said the problem is we isolate Yes, we are not of the world, but we're in the world. Yes, we need to come out from among them and be separate. Yes, we need to be holy, but we still live in the world, and we still got to reach for the world. We need to be able to be in the world to witness and not let them affect us and draw us out. One man said that the church... Most people think of the church as just a building. We're more than a building. 
The church is more than a building. A building is just where we assemble. The building is just where we come to teach. This, the building is where we just come to worship him and pray and join together in unity. But we should be more than a building. We should go into all the world and preach the gospel, teach the gospel, be a witness of the gospel. We are isolated, usually just temporarily, though, particularly Sunday morning. We have more people come on Sunday morning than we have that come Wednesday night. But it should be more than that. The church is not the building. The church is the people that go into the building to join together that goes out to the world. And so, and I understand that we want to leave most responsibility to the professional clergy, but the fact is God called us all to reach. Say amen. 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 Glory to God. I see a lady from the bank coming in. Praise the Lord, sister. Sister banker, hallelujah. Amen. Good to have you. Now, doesn't she remind you of Sister Carrie? Hallelujah. But Sister Carrie's not here. She's out of town, but you'll meet her in a couple weeks. Hallelujah. Good to have you. She's my local banker there on uh, over by Publix on, what is that, Atlantic. Amen. Amen. Good to have her with us tonight. Amen. Glory to God. And so we see that the church is more than a building. The church is is the body of Christ, the people that go to church who go out into the world and they proclaim the gospel. They become a witness. They are light. Amen. And I, I'm thankful that she came tonight. She she's uh she she's promoting me right now because I was a light. She goes, You go to church? Hallelujah. I said, yes, I do. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we, con- we connected and we shared some information. See, I could tell that she was a Christian. She could tell that I was a Christian because the light was shining. Right. Say amen. amen. And so we need to have that responsibility. We need to take what we have and we need to take it out to the world. We have lost contact with people in the world. And so what we do is we're not respecting the house of the Lord. We're not respecting the word of God. We're not respecting the Lord of the church. And we're not respecting his plans that he has for the church. Our job is to go out among them. Our church church needs to go and reach the lost. See, we are free from the wisdom of the world because we've been freed from sin. And so the light, the light of all these problems that we have just covered is that we need to renew the church. We need to renew God's church. We need God to help us renew his church. How do we do that? We, we go into the world. We pray. We, 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 be, we try to become more effective for the kingdom of God. We study the word. We meditate upon the word. We apply the word. We become the light to the, to the world. Uh, uh, you know, the world is full of darkness, and it's, it should be easy to spot somebody who has the spirit of God. It should be easy to, to notice that they're different than the world, that, that they're there's wisdom that's coming from above, and it's not coming from the, from the earth. It, they ought to be able to see there's something different, that you have God's spirit, that, that you, you have a relationship with God. They ought to be able to tell that you're not like the world. You, you got a different attitude. Hallelujah. They ought to be able to tell that you, you're full of purity and mercy and grace and, and goodness and kindness and patience. And, and these things ought to show in your walk with God because you've been renewed hallelujah we're full of his spirit but we got to continuously be renewed because sometimes we get isolated sometimes we are inconsistent sometimes we cause division we're not unified. Sometimes we don't have the happiness and the joy of God. Sometimes we have fear in our life. And sometimes we are, we are going through trouble and, and we allow those things to affect us. And now we begin to look like the world. When we have fear that God didn't give us, he said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. 
So we ought to be fearless. If, if God gave us happiness, anybody happy that God saved you? Is anybody happy that God loved you and died? Hey, he shed his blood on Calvary's cross for you so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. You ought to be happy that God did that for you. I didn't do it. I didn't even have plans to do it. But God and his mercy and his grace and that faith that he gave us, that little bit of measure of faith, we were able to receive that and we ought to be happy about that hallelujah there's nothing in this world that ought to take the joy that God has given us if I have nothing it's okay if I have nothing as long as I got Christ as long as I got God I know that I'm going to be okay because this is not my home I want to go to heaven I am free from the wisdom that comes from the world. I have the wisdom that comes from God. Purity, goodness, kindness, mercy, hallelujah, glory to God. We ought to be happy. We ought to be fearless. And yes, the church is going to have trouble, but it's because we're inconsistent. It's because we have people causing division. We have people who lie. We have people that have the seven things that God hates. And we need to come to the altar. And we need to let the fire of the altar cleanse us and purify us and wash us and renew our minds. God, I need to be renewed. Sometimes we, we listen, if we don't come to the altar and then sometimes if we don't read and pray and let God's word penetrate our hearts, what's going to happen is we're going we're, we're gonna to get immune to God's move and his mercy and we're going to become someone who causes division. We're going to get jealous. We're going to get bitter. We're going to get angry. We're going to cause strife. We're going to cause division in the church. And then we get stagnant and we don't reach the world. The world doesn't even know who we are. We look like the world. Because why? Because we have allowed ourselves to do the things that God said that we should not do. God is not finished with the church yet, Brother Romig. He is affirming the hope that is in the church. There's a reason God has a church. And it's not the church building. It's the people. There's some powerful scriptures here that I want to share with you that proclaims the victory of the church. If God was done with the church... He would not proclaim these things. Matthew chapter 16 and 18 says, And the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. And so we understand the church is going to stand. God is for us. God is on our side. So we ought to be happy. We ought to be fearless. This is the promise. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is the promise. God gave us the promise that that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's a promise of life. It's a promise of victory to the church. This is the church on offense. Listen, we need to batter down and knock the devil silly. Take down strongholds because we have victory. We, We are on the winning team. Let the church take heart. Matthew 18 and verse 20 says, Where two or three are gathered, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst. There's a good thing and a bad thing. It's, listen, it's a bad thing that we can only get two or three together. God says, all I don't need is two because I can't hardly get three or four together. So if you get two or three, I'll be there in the midst. The good news is God's going to be there. Say amen, hallelujah. He made it easy. If you can get two people to agree on anything, I'll be in the middle of it. Hallelujah. We don't need 100. We don't need 200. We just need two. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 through 26, he says, But in a 
great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21 says, if, any, if, if a man or a woman therefore purge themselves from these, they shall be a vessel unto honored. Hallelujah. Sanctified. 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 We're going to have the wisdom that comes from above. We are going to be sanctified. We're going to be washed, cleansed, and meet for the master's use and prepared to every good work. And then he goes on and says, flee also youthful lust. But follow, watch this, here it is, the, 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 the wisdom that comes from a heaven. Follow righteousness, faith, charity or love, peace with them that call on the Lord out of the heart that is pure. And then verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing they only do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those who oppose themselves. Because they have wisdom from the earth. They have wisdom from the flesh. So they oppose the things that, that the wisdom that comes from God. And so we got to be patient, we got to be gentle, apt to teach with meekness, instructing those who oppose themselves, and we pray that God peradventure that will come, that they will come to the, the, the acknowledge of the truth and come to repentance. In verse 26, and, and 26 it says, And they that may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And then when you go down to chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, here's the wisdom that comes from the earth. Here's the wisdom that comes from the flesh. Here's the wisdom that comes from the world. This is what's going to happen. This is the evidence that you're not receiving wisdom that comes from God. Because these are the things that, that are going to take place. In verse 1 it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Remember, one of the things that God hates is what? Pride. A proud look. Say amen. And so he says here that in the last days, perilous times shall come. They'll be lovers of themselves. Covetous. Always wanting. Always wanting. Always wanting what somebody else has. I want my neighbor stuff. You know, a lot of times we get ourselves in trouble because we covet things. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, all the same things that God hates. Fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. These things come from the flesh. These things come from the earth, not from God's wisdom. They have a form of godliness. Watch this. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And therefore, they, what? They turn away. Say they turn away. For of this sort... Are they that creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with all kinds of different divers' lust? And here's the key verse. Ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so to have wisdom and knowledge that comes from heaven, we will learn the truth. We, we won't have Evidence that we're, we're operating out of the earth, out of pride and, and lying and bitterness and strife and doing evil things and wanting to cause a division in the church, these type things. And then if you drop down to verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If they persecuted him, they're going to persecute you. 
I, I've come to realize that there is no way you can never say anything that's going to satisfy everybody because some people have the spirit that, that, that comes from heaven and other people have a different kind of spirit. There's no way you can say, you can, there's nothing you can say that will bring everybody together. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou. This is the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. Timothy, what you had learned. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou, thou hast learned from. In other words, he's not saying what you learned as a child. He's saying what Timothy learned from the Apostle Paul. Say amen. And so we have to understand what the scripture's saying, who they're writing, who they're writing to. He's not saying if you grew up one way and you learned something as a child that you need to stay steadfast in what you learned as a child. He's saying, Timothy, what you learn from me. Say amen. amen. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. I want to be wise. How can I be wise? I got the wisdom from heaven, not from the earth. That means we got to be pure. We got to be peaceful. Peaceful. We, 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 can't, we can't be causing division. We can't be bitter and angry. We can't be uh, doing evil things. We, 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 listen, we're, we're going to be fearless. We're going to be happy. We know that there's trouble, but we're here to be peacemakers, and that's the spirit that comes from above. And then he goes on and says, which, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now watch this, these last two scriptures in chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture, everybody say all scripture. Not some, not the ones you want to pick, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable, everybody say it's profitable. For doctrine. Well, doctrine is not very important. No, if the Apostle Paul said it was important, then it is important. If he says it's not important, then he wouldn't be talking about it. And we find out that he's constantly always saying, stay steadfast in the doctrine. Continue in the doctrine. Don't leave the doctrine. There's only one doctrine. He constantly talks about the doctrine. So he said it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction into righteousness. Listen, we can, have, we can have a good heart and not have knowledge, but when knowledge comes, right, wisdom comes from the knowledge that we get. And so we need to be instructed. What's going to instruct us? God, his word, hallelujah, holy man that God chooses to teach the word. We are instructed so that we can get the knowledge, so that we can get the wisdom that comes from heaven. When we're babies, we don't have all the knowledge, so we might stumble, we might fall. As long as we don't have a heart condition problem, maybe it's a brain problem, maybe we don't have the knowledge, so we don't do what we're supposed to because we didn't know about it. But if I'm going to learn the word, it's good for doctrine, reproof, it's going to correct me, and it's going to instruct me. Somebody say amen. Why does God want us to be instructed into righteousness? Because that's one of the things that we produce, righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then I'm going to close with 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. He's writing here and he says, I charge thee there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Here it is. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Why does not people want to get wisdom that comes from heaven? I really don't understand. If I'm going, listen, if I'm going to go to church, if I'm going to believe in Christ, I want to get the wisdom that comes from heaven. I don't want, I want sound doctrine. I want sound teaching. I want sound instruction. I want to know the truth. Why do we go to church if we don't want to know the truth? 
It says here that there will become a time where they will not endure sound doctrine. Why? Why do people go to churches that don't teach sound doctrine? Because of their itchy ears, their own lust. Because their wisdom comes from the earth. It comes from the world. It comes from their flesh. It comes from the devil. It's not the wisdom that comes from heaven. It says there will be a time and it will come and they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. You know, you can find any kind of church and they'll tell you what you want to hear. I don't care what it is that you want to hear. There's somebody teaching it. Your itchy ear will find it. What we teach is the apostolic doctrine. We are teaching what the apostles taught. What we teach is what God wanted the apostles to tell people to teach. Say amen. But after their own lust, they shall heap unto themselves teachers having itchy ears. And then they will, what? They shall turn away their ears from the truth. And they shall be unto fables. The Lord Jesus Christ is our hope. Say amen. amen. We don't need to, to fear. We don't need to be in despair. We ought to be happy and we should be fearless. In Revelation, we're going to go to Revelation 3.20 in just a second, but in Revelation 2 and 3 it contains the words, He that hath an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. What we've got to understand is we've got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I'm here to tell you, you need to be free from the wisdom of the world, and you need to serve God, and you need that wisdom that comes from heaven. You've got to get the knowledge, and you're, you've got to have a pure heart. You've got to have the right attitude. But God will teach you if you, what? If you are really willing to receive. We, we, listen, we need, a, we need a church that's on fire. We don't need a lukewarm. We don't need a cold church. We need a church that's on fire. Salvation is of the Lord. Revelation 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door, and I knock. And if anyone shall hear my voice... I will open up the door and they will be joined to me. Listen, if you really want to know God, you have the ability to knock and he will open and you will receive wisdom that comes from heaven and you can get rid. You don't, listen, you can be free of the wisdom of the world and the earth and the carnal nature that you have. God said, I will fill you with knowledge. You can be, what? You can receive truth. You can receive salvation. You can be led by the Spirit, and you can be fearless, and you, hallelujah, ought to be happy. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The joy of the Lord, hallelujah, is my salvation. Glory to God. Amen. I want to walk around and be a light. I want to walk around and people can see I have peace. I want to walk around and see people that they, they can tell I trust God. Hallelujah. I want people to be able to see that it's not me. It's him. Hallelujah. I am nothing without him. I'm incomplete without him. I can't do anything without him. It's his calling. It's his gift. It's his faith that he has given me. Hallelujah. To exercise. we got to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to Bahamas here next week or next yeah is it next week next weekend hallelujah going to the Bahamas we're going to preach a conference over there for three days listen if you if you can go go if you can't pray for somebody to go if you can't do that then support somebody hallelujah whatever you can do go into all the world and preach the gospel and that means here also hallelujah Reach your co-workers, reach your family, reach your neighbors, reach out for your banker, hallelujah. Reach out for, for the car dealer, reach out for somebody that works in Publix, reach out to somebody shopping at Publix. Say amen. Reach out to the manager at the gas station, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. Reach out to people in the hospital, say amen, amen. Behold, he's knocking. He's just waiting for you to open the door. Say amen. John chapter 12, 24. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, falls to the earth and dies. 
Listen, we've got to die. We've got to die. We've got to die to self. We've got to die to worldly wisdom. We've got to die to our desires. We need the wisdom that comes from above. We need to be free from the, the world wisdom. Listen, God, give me a pure heart. Lord, give me the ability to, to be happy, to be fearless, to be a peacemaker. I don't want to cause strife. I don't want to cause division. I don't want to cause evil. Lord, I want, I want your kingdom to grow. I want your church to grow. It's not even my church. It's your church. And I just want to be a part of what you're doing in your kingdom. Somebody say amen. Death is the key to life, the Christian life. Death to our will, death to our goals, death to our plans, and death to self-existence. I know we have to work. I know we have to take care of our family. I know we have to do this. I know we have to do those things. But, but the main thing is everything that I do, I want to do it working through Christ. I want Christ working through me. I want, I want people to see that I have faith in God. I trust God. I, I, yes, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do, but I'm allowing God to work through me. Somebody say amen. amen. Christ then gives us life. Hunger for new life. Let me say that again. Hunger for new life. Hunger. Hunger for new life. Hunger to grow in Christ. Hunger to have more knowledge. Hunger to have more understanding. Hunger for more happiness. Hunger for less fear. I believe you and other people believe the church is worth saving. I believe you believe that God's word is worth saving. We need to be aware of the times. Time is short. We're losing spiritual sensitivity. The more we live in this world, it seems the more we don't have spiritual sensitivity. Time is short. Jesus is coming. Time is short. People are dying without the gospel in their heart. Let's stand. I hope that the church because of our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that He is, I hope that He is living in us so that we can reach our world. The time is now. We need to live in the present. We need to live for Him. We need to be useful for him. Remember, if we purge ourselves, we can be vessels of honor. We can be used for the highest purpose. Hallelujah. Whatever, well, what is the highest purpose? I believe the highest purpose is that if we have a pure heart and we're cleansed, God can use us for whatever that he needs us to be used for. And if we have the right attitude, it doesn't matter what it is that God uses us for. We're willing to do whatever God wants us to do. Amen. If we build the altar, Brother Mike, hopefully soon, I think God will send the fire. Say amen. I just wonder if you'll come tonight and come up to the altar, the one that's not built yet. Hallelujah. Amen. Waiting for a permit. But I believe God can send the fire up here near where the altar is going to be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's come, Lord. I want the wisdom that comes from above. I want to be free from the world's wisdom. Lord, I want to be pure. Lord Jesus, I want to be a unifier. I want to be one in the kingdom of God. I want to be a peacemaker. Glory, I want to be merciful. I want to be meek. I want to be humble. I don't want to lie. I don't want to divide. I don't want to, I don't want to do mischief. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to be wise in the kingdom of God. Lord, teach me thy 
thy ways, O God. Lord, uh, let me study thy word, hallelujah, that I can be what? That I can rightly divide the word of truth. Glory to God. Lord, help me be patient, apt to teach. Let me be meek and humble. Let me be a light in this dark world, O God. Lord, let the light shine through me, God, so that they can see you, God. Lord Jesus, I'm incomplete without you. I am nothing without you. I can't do anything without you. Lord, I need your spirit. I need you to forgive us right now. Lord, stir up a fire. Stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost. Stir up the fire in us tonight, God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Would you come and get renewed? Maybe it's been a while since you spoke in tongues. Maybe it's been a while since you touched the throne of God. Maybe it's been a while since you felt the presence of God. Why don't you come? Why don't you take that step? Hallelujah. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Oh, God, I need wisdom, God. I need more knowledge, God. I want to be closer, God. I want to know more, God. I want to be more effective, God. Hallelujah. I want the light to shine even lighter, God. Lord, I repent, oh, God, of my mistakes. I repent, oh, God, for my failures, God. I repent, oh, God, if I haven't been merciful, God. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you come? The Holy Ghost is not done yet. Would you come? I feel like God is trying to renew somebody. God, because you are the church. God wants to renew his church. You are the church. Hallelujah. You're his church. Oh, purge me, God. Wash me, God. Cleanse me, God. Purify me, God. God, sanctify me, God. Use me, God, as a vessel of honor, God, for your highest purpose, God. Whatever the need is, God. Lord, use me, God, to teach a Bible study. Reach me, God, to invite somebody to church. Lord, use me to pray for somebody. Lord, use me to visit somebody. Lord, use me to give, oh God. Use me to go to a mission trip, God. Use me to send somebody on a mission trip. Lord, use me. Lord, whatever the situation, God, whatever the need is, God, Lord, let me operate in the gift, oh God, that is needed for the time, oh God. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Hallelujah. Come on, we are not of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. If you're not happy, come renew yourself. If you're living in fear, come renew yourself. God did not give you the spirit to fear. Hallelujah. He gave you a sound mind. Hallelujah. That comes from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Every mind on God. Let's Come on, let's praise Him right now. We need to be renewed. We need to be renewed. We need to be renewed. Hallelujah. I know we still have some folks out of town for the holiday, but we need to be renewed. We need to reach. We need to, we need to be a light. We need to, we, we need to get rid of the unclean things in our mind, unclean things in our heart. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank
Thank you for the liberty. Thank you for the freedom, God, not to have to live by the world standard, God. But Lord, after you, God, and your wisdom, God, your doctrine, Lord, your word, oh God, your word is pure. Your word is cleansing. Your word, oh God, is perfect, oh God. It converts our soul, God. It gives wise wisdom to even the unlearned, God. Oh, God. Your word, God. Your ways, oh, God, is better than silver and gold. It's better. It tastes better than honey, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Your word is everlasting, God. Lord, it's forever settled in heaven, oh, God. We can't add or subtract from it, God. It's Lord, it's your word. It never changes, oh God. It's truth, oh God. It's been tried, oh God. It's been through the fire, God. It's pure, oh God. Oh Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh God. Oh, Jesus, my God. I don't want envy. I don't want confusion. I don't want strife. I don't want bitterness. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I don't want to be like Cain who gets jealous and envious of his brother and kills him. I don't want to be like Joseph's brother who got jealous and envious and sold him into slavery. God, unify your body. We are many members, oh God, but we have one body. Unify us, God. Let us have that spirit that comes from heaven. Let us be filled and endued with knowledge. Let us apply it to our lives. Let us be meek and humble. Jesus. Lord, we don't want to do wickedness. We don't want to be causing mischief. Hmm. I don't want to fear. We don't need to fear what's going on in the world. If God be for us, then who can be against us? There is no weapon formed that shall prosper. Hallelujah. Are you happy now? Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Are you happy now? Hallelujah. Are you happy now? Hallelujah. We are a happy people. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Praise God. Amen. Brother Mike, will you close out with the, the prayer tonight? Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Max, are you from Freeport? Nassau. Nassau. Amen. If you have anybody in Freeport, tell them to come to the services. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Good to have our sister. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why don't you greet her in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Amen. If you need a, a bank to go to, we can send you her way. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs>